Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Gary Lindsay, Grammy-nominated arranger, composer, educator, and author. Gary is here to show us how to orchestrate orchestral woodwinds in a jazz setting. Hi everyone. I'm doing a project, just completing it now, for uh, basically uh, seven woodwinds, nine brass, percussion, rhythm section, and strings. And it's on a piece by Lyle Mays called Chorinho. And um, so I thought I would highlight some of the woodwind writing and how I utilize them in this particular piece. So the first thing to mention is the textures that I created were based on how are we affected by having two similar instruments or two dissimilar instruments. So for instance, two flutes still has the characteristic of a flute, only adding the element of the unison, which changes the waveform slightly. If we go clarinet and flute, clarinet sounds different than flute, but it's still relatively mellow depending on the register. So it changes both of them. It doesn't sound like a flute or a clarinet. It sounds like some kind of a hybrid, but uh, in combination it works well. If you take something much more dissimilar like an oboe, the oboe's nasal characteristic combined with the flute smooth characteristic affects it in a way where the flute makes the oboe a little less nasal and the nasal characteristic of the oboe makes the flute a little less smooth uh, in its texture. So those are the considerations. In addition to that, I was considering the, the register that I write in, how many instruments I'm using in the combination. I have uh, piccolo, two flutes, clarinet, bass clarinet, two bassoons and contra bassoon. Actually, the contra bassoon is the only fake instrument uh, in the score. Um, so Depending on the amount of power and uh, projection I needed out of the woodwinds, that would change what register I wrote in, how many different octaves I used, uh, what the weight of it was, what the dynamics, all of those are considerations uh, to determine how much strength or weight I need to go with the brass or strings or whatever else is happening. Flute and clarinet in unison and gives the this piece starts with piano and then adds clarinet. And as it adds flute, the texture just changes slightly with that combination. Uh, they complement each other very well. The clarinet can adapt to the flute. Uh, so it, it's an easy combination to use. It's very, very common. Bass clarinet and clarinet. You'll notice that the bass clarinet is an octave higher than the bass clarinet, than the clarinet making them in exact unison. So the advantage of that is if you're writing in a weaker register on clarinet, for instance, E to B flat in the staff, um, then you can highlight that, give it more strength by using the bass clarinet. In order to get that unison, the bass clarinet is transposed up an octave in a much more vibrant register. So the combination gives that a lot of strength, even when the clarinet is uh, a little bit weaker or relatively weak. <laughs> Here we have the clarinet and bass clarinet in octaves and uh, great combination. And you can see that the flexibility of a good bass clarinet is uh, can be just as flexible as a clarinet. So pretty much anything you write for the clarinet is a possibility on the bass clarinet. And so it gives you that added texture. They blend very well, it's the same instrument, uh, different size, but basically uh, it works well. <laughs> Okay, so here we're adding many more instruments. We have flute and clarinet in octaves. Uh, we add the bass clarinet and the bassoon an octave below the clarinet. So we have three different octaves. The oboe plays some of the middle phrases just to give us another texture. Okay, in this piece, which is a short uh, Brazilian dance style, that's what the left hand of the piano is playing throughout the piece. So one of the things orchestrationally, I want to have other people play that or double that left hand of the piano to introduce different colors. And the bassoons do it very well. Um, and in, in addition to the bassoons, the contra bassoon is accenting the downbeat uh, in each of those phrases on one and three. Later on in this particular piece, 
Uh, base clarinet will play that same function as the contrabassoon, and two trombones will play the, the upbeat uh, function that the bassoons will play. Here I'm going for maximum power. The flute, oboe, and clarinet are in exact unison in the high register, and the piccolo is an octave higher. So it adds quite a bit of strength to that, and uh, with accents especially, it can really punch through a brass section. So here's an example of a voicing technique. Uh, when voicing for woodwinds, we generally stay away from four-way close, close position voicings, unless we're trying to get Christmassy music or Disney type sounds from the woodwinds. Uh, but better to have a drop two or a fourth voicing or spread voicing, open up them, the voicings a little more. It makes the character, character of each individual instrument stand out better, and it also makes for a, a better balance. The oboe in close position with flute can very easily overshadow, so it's better to open up a bit. Very common to have a woodwind duet, and here I have the duet doubled. Two flutes and an oboe and a clarinet playing the two parts. And uh, anytime you make those kind of doublings, it gives it a little bit more strength, a little bit more character. And again, it pushes through the mix better by having more instruments on that. And they all articulate very well. Okay, we start with the duet again. Uh, now we're in octaves, and we add the bass clarinet and bassoon playing a, a bass function in conjunction with that. And the piccolo adds to the very ending of that phrase to give it uh, a higher octave and more weight. You'll also notice that when they play that triplet figure, the clarinets and oboe are playing basically a triad in that triplet to give it some thickness in terms of voicing. Many combinations there. We have the piccolo in its lower register that's just adding a little bit more weight to the flute. Uh, but then in select phrases, it's an up an octave to add that sparkle. Um, oboe and second flute are in the same register. It's actually during the solo section, there's a clarinet solo going on here. Then the bass clarinet and the bassoon are doubling the actual uh, the acoustic bass and bass trombone. So they're adding to that way. By having the bass function in the woodwinds and having the bass trombone pan to the right and the woodwinds pan to the left, it gives you that back and forth between those bass functions in the bass. I hope this has inspired all of you to venture into the woodwind world. It's great colors and lots of fun. They can play almost anything. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.